Already, I'm pouring out my spirit. Make sure you don't miss it. Now, when I hear that, that scares me because I feel like it could be missed. Now, the, the Spirit is being poured out somewhere all the time across the world, but if we miss it, we're going to miss it. So I began to inquire of the Lord what we're going to need to do. And one of the things that's going to happen when this outpouring begins is go, if you go back to Malachi, the last chapter of Malachi, which is chapter 4, and it says in verse 5 there, that's a short chapter there, but in verse 5 it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet uh, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest they come and spite the earth with a curse. Now, generally speaking, I like the King James rendering of this, but this, there are some translations that make that a little more, uh, a little more potent to me. But I tell you, we all understand that. Children, the Lord wants to bring you back with your fathers and mothers in agreement. Parents, the Lord wants you to have an agreement as well. Now, with that in mind, let's really do some consideration tonight. How are we going to prepare for this outpouring of the Spirit and what's going to happen? I didn't know when I started praying over the Shandong Valley that had anything to do with what he's talking about. I was just talking about having a revival or transformation here. But it sounds to me like it's going to be an international move of the Spirit of God. And ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to miss it. We can't afford to miss it. We've got to make sure we're in unity. What he told me, you have to be in unity. Because what happens is amazing to me. If you seek after the, uh, if you seek after miracles, you'll get them, but you'll miss me. You seek me, miracles of Allah, and you won't miss me. That's the reason why many people, they're seeking after miracles, they'll get them. But all of a sudden, they find out that wasn't exactly God. And all of a sudden, they find themselves in delusion and all kind of things. So I want to really get our attention. While the body of Christ is united, we can see heaven and earth come together. So my message tonight is when the body of Christ, the anointed one, is united. And heaven will come to earth when, uh, when we become united then heaven will unite with us, but we have to be united for heaven to be united with us. Right. When heaven comes to earth, and uh, God's will will be done on earth, in earth as it is in heaven. That's what one of the things going to happen. And when the body of Christ is united, the Holy Spirit will function and operate in His fullest measure. When the body of Christ is united, the angels will operate with their awesome power and working and stalling and fighting against the work of the devil, knocking the devil out of the way. Now, here we go. This is going to happen. The prayer of faith to defeat the devil is going to work. Our, our faith is going to soar up high. Our faith is going to get some boost. Another thing is going to happen. Faith is the mighty force that destroys anything that hinders a unity or causes the carnal to take over. You see, carn carnal people are easily peeved and offended. That's the first thing I received. Offended, the easy peeved and offended. You hurt my feelings, bloody with it. Folks, listen. I tell you, it's time for us to grow up. We're not children anymore. You and I, 
uh, are, are mature individuals. I don't care if you're 15 or whether you're 50. We ought to be mature. At least for your age, you ought to be mature. And I, I think that children in other world are going to excel some of the rest because they're too lazy to get with it. And I don't want that to happen, you know. All right. Carnal, carnality hates leadership, godly leadership. It doesn't like that. Because it wants to do its own thing. Don't tell me what to do. After all, the Lord speaks to me, and I don't want to hear what you got to say. Uh, carnality always disturbs unity. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit is coming somewhere, somewhere in this valley. We're praying. I've been praying for quite a long time. Y'all have been praying. And things are about ready to break through now. And we've, what we're not looking for miracles, we're looking for a move of God. Let miracles follow. Amen. But let's get a hold of God. Get right with God. One of the things he warned me, don't look for miracles. Look for my hand. Let me lead you. Let me guide you. Let me correct you. Let me protect you. And I'll tell you what, that's really what we're looking for. Too many people are looking for action. You know where the action's at? Get on your knees and bow those knees before the Almighty God. And I'll tell you, great things can happen. Great things will happen because great is the mighty name of Jesus, the one who saved us from our sin. Uh, carnal people don't like spirituality. They, they, don't, uh, they think you're kind of critical and uh, why do you think, uh, I mean, I'm just as good as you are and, and all that kind of thing. That's carnality. The next thing carnality does is a pardon to rebellion. Carnality and, and rebellion are, are in the same family line. And uh, carnality fights against God and God fights against carnality. They're at odds with each other. They're at war with each other. They're not together anymore. Satan enters the church through false brethren and hypocrites. That's how he gets into the church, is through false brethren and hypocrites. And one of the false brethren is those that are seeking miracles and signs and wonders before they seek the Lord God of heaven, seeking the will of God. What is your will for my life? What do you want me to do? Suppose the Lord said to some of y'all today that wants something great to happen in your life, and he would tell you what I want you to do for the next three years is pray and do nothing but pray and prepare. What would you do? No, I want to go now. That's the trouble. Sometimes it takes prayer long before we can go. A Satan can dominate a church when proud people are in control. Now you can imagine that. <coughs> Pride is of the devil and it always will be. Another thing, the carnal people are bone diggers. Uh, they like to bring everybody's past. That is carnality to the limit. That is a thing that's going to anger God as about as much as anything you can think of. It's when you bring up people's past. Hey, but you know what he used to? I mean, oh, Paul, you know, I mean, he used to, mind. he was really a bad man. Now God put his benediction on Paul. I don't believe it. I can't believe Paul would ever uh, got to this place. I mean, you know, all we judge and judge and judge. Kind of mind has a different style of dress and behavior altogether. That's not the way I do things. This is the way we do things. Now let me go through some things. Uh, then there arose a murmuring among the disciples who should be the greatest. Oh, wait. That kind of knocks it out. That's carnality, you see. And and there was strife also among them, which of them should be accounted greatest. And in other places it says in the same book, that is Luke chapter 9, verse 46, Luke chapter 22, uh, uh, Luke 22, 24 through 26, and it says, And there was also a strife among them, that's the apostles, which of them should be accounted greatest? And he said to me that the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. 
But he that's greatest among you, let him be there as the younger. And he that's chief among you, let him be as one that serves. I tell you, folks, there it is. He said there's going to be a hindrance. There's going to be someone that rises up every time there's a revival, somebody will try to do something to stall it, to stop it. And you and I got to have faith enough to pray it through. You and I can do it, folks. You and I can do it. You know, Paul said, but even as we suffered before and were shamefully treated, Bill applied, said they were still bold to speak the word of God. And uh, it, it seems to me like we're going to have to get some boldness. Let's not let the hinders stop it. They, what we got to do is pray the Lord, fill us with the Holy Ghost power, anoint our lips. Anoint us with the awesome, almighty power of God. For out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. That's what he promised. Out of his innermost being, out of his spirit man, shall flow rivers of living waters. Who's that to anybody that will listen? There is no such thing as we can't because we can't ain't a word. We can do it. We can. I know we can. And I'm saying to you, we can bring this revival or transformation or whatever you want to call it out here. We can get it started right here. Remember years ago, the prophecy was given that the revival would start at the foot of this mountain. I still believe that. It's not going to be a man does it. It's going to be God does it. Everybody listen. We've got to get in unity. I think all of us are familiar with united we stand, divided we fall. I think we all understand that. We're not going to make much out of us being divided. Well, I'll tell you, I just don't know about this thing. I mean, there's nothing happening. It's nothing happening. I mean, it's just nothing happening. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, really, it's just nothing happening. Well, how do you know it's nothing happening? Who told you it wasn't anything happening? It may be more happening than you think it's happening. You know that? Did you know that's a possibility? And it may be you're the very one hindering it. Did you think about that? Because nothing got, it may be you're the one causing the problem. I'm giving you the word of the Lord now. I'm giving you the word of the Lord. Not my opinion now. I am saying we need to examine ourselves. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and let's do some looking at this uh, uh, verse a little bit, uh, this chapter a little bit here in chapter 4. And I'm going to begin reading up here at the beginning. Uh, uh, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Now that sentence is a great sentence, a big sentence, a long sentence. With all of us need to be lowly and meek in heart. We're not looking for a position. We're not looking for a place. We are not saying thy will be done, then go do something else. We're going to believe we can do that. We can walk in meekness. There is one body and one spirit even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But in the every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. 
Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on the high, he led captive, cap, uh, captivity captive and gave gifts unto man, and he gave some to you, and he gave some to me, and he gave some to us as a church to use together. Now when he ascended, what is that he also descended first in the lower parts of the earth, that he, and he did descend, it is the same also the descendant far above heaven, that he might fill all things. Now nobody knows for sure what happened when he descended in the earth. We don't know everything that took place. But i tell you one thing, I believe that he loosed the prisoner from his bondage. We got, all we got to do is seize it. He came to set the captive free. He came to set us free from pride and arrogance and show. Folks, listen. The Holy Spirit is wanting to come and do great things. But the way I understand it can't come yet because we're not in one yet. But praise God, we can do that tonight. Does the Bible say, where two of you shall agree as touch anything, it'll be done? Yes. You know, the thing he showed me, those two people have to be 100% in unity. They can't be 90%. They can't be 90% in unity. They can't be. They have to be 100% behind the Word of God and nothing else. There are two or three are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of them. I'm going to be there. He promised that. It is a promise to all of us. It's a promise to us right here. If you can get three people to agree all together, total agreement, then you're going to be able to pray things through. Carnality has got to go out of the way. We can do the damage to the kingdom of Satan if we need to do that. And here is what he said, and he gave some apostles, and he gave some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why did he give them all? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and listen to for the perfecting in the saints, the work in the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ. Now we're going to have an evangelist coming here just shortly. He's going to edify us. We have got to get ready to receive what he's going to get to us. Instead of sleeping, and all we're going to get excited. I tell you what, you have a hard time sleeping if you get excited about what the Lord is going to do. But can the Lord do it? Make sure you don't miss it, is what he told me. Make sure you don't miss it. I'm sending the Spirit in full measure. Make sure you don't miss it. If you're critical or you decide you're going to try to do what other people are doing, you're watching somebody else and examining this church with another, and all that kind of thing, it will work. We've got to be in unity. Till we all come in the unity of faith, all of us believe the same thing, and of the knowledge of the Son of God and the perfect man and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, being totally involved, totally overcome by the anointing power of God that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine and the slate of men and the cunning craftiness wherein they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things which is head, even Christ, in whom the whole body, all of us, has fitly joined together and come back to bed where every joint supplied according to effectual working of the measure in every part, making increase in the body into the edifying of itself in love. Folks, the power of the Almighty God 
is waiting to come. You and I are supposed to have the Holy Ghost in us. Let us exercise. Let us come forth. When the body of Christ becomes one, perfect union of heaven will come down and the glory will surround us. That's what we got to do, folks. And listen, I don't know how far we're going to go with this because the Lord may stop me on it. If, if people are not interested, he may stop me. But if you're interested, we're going to do something about it now. Amen. There's something about to happen. And it says in Romans chapter 12, 5, so we being many are one body. Many people, one body in Christ. And every one members one of another. Everybody is a member of the other. We're all concerned about each other. We love each other. We help each other. We pray for each other. We care about each other. We really do. And verse Corinthians uh, chapter 10 and verse 70, and we being many are one bread, one bread and one body, but we are partakers of that one bread. And Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. If you eat of me, you'll live forever. So that's what he said in John chapter 6. You read it for yourself. He's talking about being the bread of life. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 says, For as many for as the body is one and hath many members, uh, of that one body being many are one body, so also in Christ Jesus, all right, your fingers are part of you. If something happens that finger, it affects everybody. If that one finger gives you a joy, get a splinter, a little tiny splinter you can't even hardly see, that thing can irritate you terrible. You know when one member in the church gets on the offense, some member in the church gets insulted, or some member in the church is trying to run things that are not supposed to be, it'll cause major problems. It opens the door wide open for Satan, what you're doing when you do that. When somebody brings up bickering and complaining in the church, they're opening the door to Satan and say, come on in. Welcome to truth, light, and life. That's exactly what we're doing, folks. We're going to have to decide. We're all together on this thing. Well, but I tell you what, this ain't the way I agree with it. I, I just don't agree with that. I tell you what, I, one time I, I never said a word to this fellow. One time I was preaching in the place, and they assigned a long-haired hillbilly, and his wife told me around. He's dressed like a hillbilly and act like a hillbilly and talk like a hillbilly and had hair cut down his shoulders. And, and uh, so he started down the road. He said, Brother Rhodes, I was sitting in the back seat with wifey. He turned around and said, his wife is in the front seat with him. He said, do you have a problem with my long hair? And I said, well, I never said a word about your hair, did he? No, but I feel kind of guilty after I picked you up. You never even seen me before. I said, you pray about your hair. Don't ask me about it. I'm not going to tell you anything about your hair. You got to pray about it. So the next time he came to pick me up, I was there for several days. The next time he came to pick me up, he said, Brother Rhodes, every time I'm around you, I feel bad about my hair the way I'm dressed, the way I'm doing things. I said, I never said a word to you. Well, I know you didn't, but my wife and I are both thinking something wrong. I didn't say it was or not. I went back to preaching again. And so now he's supposed to take me to the airport. On the way her at the airport, he said, Brother Rhodes, the next time you see me, I am not going to have long hair. I'm going to change. I never said a word to him about anything. And I tell you, that's what revival will do. When we really get a holy revival, 
It'll bring conviction where conviction needs to be. If it's the real thing. If it's not the real thing, and you're still going like you always went. I tell you what, it matters. Now, I like that idea of all of us being one. That works. You know, you think about a motor. All those pistons and uh, spark plugs, I don't know if he even has spark plugs anymore, but all the thing got to work together. Everything got to work right. The battery has to be positive and negative. It's got to have them both. And everything's got to work right. If it don't, you got a problem. The same thing with our fingers and stuff. You got a problem? You see, that's not working right. I'll tell you what, I believe the Lord still said, I pray, I pray that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until you get well. No, and that to come and that to come in the Lord. All right. I've been healed of everything I had so far. From the Dukes of Town. I believe things are about to happen. Folks, I feel in my spirit. I tell you, the last couple of times I went out to pray, I felt something happen to me. I said, we're getting close now. We're getting close now. Today, Cindy was holding me around and said, Brother Road, you mind praying out loud <laughs> so I can get involved? I don't like to do that because I like to talk to the Lord all by myself, but I did. But I'll tell you what. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male or female. For ye are all one. In Christ Jesus, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. In other words, whether you're male or female, we're all in one. You're not inferior to us women, nor are we superior to you. I believe the Lord's going to do something, Ramonas. I believe he's going to clean the house first of all, get to brush us up a little, shine us. Refining fire come through and shine us up a little bit. Are you ready for the whole fire of the Holy Ghost to come and just burn the junk out of us? Are you really ready? Can you handle a little burning out? I remember when the Lord said, I thought I was getting long vine. Lord said, you got to get rid of this. 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 Well, I thought it was, I, was, I felt like I wasn't doing anything right. In fact, I told him, I'm doing anything right. He said, not much. Remember that time. But I was a hunter, and I thought I needed my guns. And they had to be ready at any moment. I called for them. And I mean, there may be a rabbit out there that needs to have his income. Or it may be a fox come past me. I love the fox hunt. I really enjoy that kind of thing, fox hunting and hunting with big old uh, uh, rabbits, big old dogs, hunting rabbits and pheasants and stuff. I really enjoyed that. But you know, I had to give it up. He didn't make me give up fishing, but he made you quieter down. Slow down a little bit. And... Uh, you know, I know of a man who one day he, he just loved the fish. And one night he dreamed he caught a fish, a great big fish. And I mean, he, he was really excited about this great big fish he caught. And when he caught this big fish and pulled it to the bank, it turned into a serpent. And the serpent hit him and bit him on, bit him on the head and bit him on the heel. And... He just, in angry, grabbed the thing up and threw it back in the water, turned into a big fish. Swam it off. And he said, wait a little. So I said to Daddy, he said, you know something, something about that. Yeah, he said, I know what you're talking about. He said, you're going to have trouble. That's what you're going to do. You're going to attack it. The church is going to attack you. He was at a big church, and 
Everything going along fine, you know. He found out people started lying about him, started gossiping and slandering and tail-bearing and all kind of thing. Put his ministry in a real, it closed a lot of doors. But all of a sudden, the door started opening, and guess where he ended up at? Back at the very church that caused the trouble. Back at the very place that the trouble started. Folks, listen. We need to remember that our God is still on the throne. That excites me, too. And we're going to have to learn the understanding and not being critical. Does anybody understand what that means? We, we don't need to be judgmental or critical towards each other. But there's some we have to pray about. You're going to have to pray instead of being critical. Okay, we're all going to unite together and pray. And that's a wonderful thing. Where two of you shall agree is touching anything, it'll be done. Now, trying to get to two degrees is pretty difficult. In fact, I don't want to have him come down and check it out if two, get two agreed. Because <laughs> that'd be kind of unique. No wonder heaven come down and check it out. I'm telling you what, we get these people to agree with each other. Well, but I agree with 99% of what you did. I won't work. You got to agree with 100%. The Lord told me if you don't agree, uh, you're going to hinder ministry. It'll, it'll start, but you will hinder it. You got to be in agreement. He's going to put some people out if they don't do it. Okay. We are going to obey the Bible, are we not? How many of y'all believe the Bible is still true? Amen. Well, how many of you believe that you're going to follow the Word of God? Yes. Not traditions of man and doctrines of man and theology or traditions and some theological idea. Now, in Ephesians 4.13, we had a little earlier, Till we all, till we all come in the unity of the other faith. Everybody, not 99%, 100% of everybody in the group all agree together. We will not go around and say, what do you think about it? How do you feel about it? I tell you what you call, when you talk about unity, when I first got that information on grace, I mean, when, when uh, my employees found out about it, that's all they could talk about for a while. That's all was on their mind. And when we all got it, look what happened. It's still going on. We ain't finished with it yet. Excuse me for using the word ain't there, but we aren't still, aren't, we aren't finished with it yet. You know what, folks? There's so many things in the Bible that need to be taught to get us ready for the coming of the Lord. I don't know when the Lord's coming. I know somebody said that all signs point that this is the last year will be a whole year. I mean, not this year, the next one coming. Will be the last year we'll be on the face of the earth, the church. Well, I don't know how they know. I don't know. I don't know how long we're going to be here. I, the Bible doesn't say. But I know one thing. One day he that said he's coming back is going to come. And we want to make sure we're ready. We're not going to miss it, folks. Let's not miss it till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and do a mature, perfect man, woman, boy, and girl and to the measure of the statue, the fullness of Christ. Would Jesus, you can have all those bracelets you want to put on you. What would Jesus do? Doesn't mean any more to the bracelet. I'm talking about getting a hold and being, Lord, I've got to be a part of you. I've got to have your spirit. I've got to have your power. Lord, I give you glory and praise and honor because you're the great majestic God Almighty. I need you, oh God. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'm down, you great is the name of the Lord. 
And I tell you what, he's coming through with the most Holy Ghost. He's coming through with the most Holy Ghost. The Bible is that one place, the most Holy Ghost. I'm telling you folks, I believe the Lord is getting ready to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall say vision, your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my housemates said, oh, I'm going to pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Glory to God, I'm telling you, wasn't it gay? All of a sudden we broke through in here, and I mean everybody got excited about Jesus, and we all began to just spontaneously worship and praise. You know what? I remember one time we couldn't close the meeting. There's just one thing after that that couldn't get the meeting closed. And I'll tell you what, those are the kind of meetings we need to have once again. I'm saying, folks, we're not going to get tired of church. I'll tell you what, till we all come, I tell you what, I wonder what's going to happen to our children. I tell you what's going to happen to our children, I think. Let's get them involved. Children, I want you really get excited. Because the Lord cares about you too. He really cares. Let's not go around and say, every, let's find out what we can do to everybody do the same. You know, I noticed something. That, now, this is not criticism. I'm just saying, but if somebody gets us thing you wrap around your neck, you know, those things, whatever they are, they fit around your neck. Then everybody gets something put around your neck. Somebody else does something else, you get that, everybody does it. We're influencing each other. But are we influencing each other for the good? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I can't find a thing in the world wrong with it. What I'm saying is we're influencing each other. Some good, some bad. The Bible says woe is... Woe to a man whom everybody speaks well of. Everybody thinks you just love you. I mean, they just love you to pieces. You better be careful. <laughs> you may remember that old woman said to my wife right in front of me, she said, I could just love you to pieces. My wife got insulted. <laughs> Uh, your first is still. <laughs> you haven't teased her mother about that too, but you know what? I'm glad she was jealous. <laughs> I never forgot that. I said, oh, wifey, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. What a scripture. Is that possible? Yes, it's possible. Now I beseech ye, brethren, sisters, children, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all, everybody, young to the oldest, all of us get involved, speak the same thing. We're all excited about what the Lord's doing. That there be no division, no division, no division among us. You remember when back yonder, that back side of the church back there, when if you wanted to get a seat, you had to come early. And people fought over their seats, tried to reserve the seats, and then lost them. <laughs> they had to get to church early. Packed in that little church back there, I counted 125 people, I think it was, in that little tiny church back there. Standing everywhere, no place to sit down, chairs around the old stove there, and me, I had people here as close as that bottle sitting there, around me, on all around me, people sitting. 
And because that's how many people come. Until the Lord began to correct and then bye bye. So when the people began to get corrected, bye bye. But this time we want correction, don't we? Amen. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear you that. Because the Lord is going to correct us. I know he will. We're not doing everything right, I know. We're going to do it right now, you understand. Now listen to this. Colossians chapter 2, and verse 2. That their hearts may be comforted being knit together. Knit together in love. And it all riches in full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Knit together. All of us bound together. That's what excites me. The comforters come. I'm telling you, folks, I know one thing, some great things are about to happen. I'm going to encourage us tonight to really get with it. Great things are about to happen. And I'm glad to see it. I feel that my spirit had already started. When I made the last three trips out across the county, I knew something was happening. And uh, I just seemed like I heard the spirit say the other day, your prayers answered. Now, uh, here's the thing. Remember this. We got to work together. When we go out, we got to be together. There is no one person going to get any of the credit. We're going to give all credit to the Holy Ghost. There's nobody else. In the name of Jesus, nobody else. It's amazing how many people say, oh, yes, you know, to God be all the glory. But I'll tell you what is really the condition of that heart that says that. Let's not be judgmental, but I tell you what, be careful. Be very careful. Make sure you know what you're saying. We must repent of any division we've got among us. I really believe that. We need to repent of what's causing division among us. Whatever is making us offended, whatever is offending us, starting that we had to repent because we got offended. You got to repent of it. That means get rid of that thing, forsake it. We ask the Lord to forgive you and come back and make that thing right. Correct our theology and philosophy. I mean, if the Lord comes in here and wants to correct your theology and philosophy, let him come. Let him come and clean this house. Yeah. Clean us all up. Right. Convict us, O oh Lord, of wherever we're wrong. And help us to be honest. Wherever we're wrong, correct us, O Lord. Glory to God and the Almighty. What a mighty God we serve. What a merciful God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Blessed be His holy name. Glory to Him that sitteth upon the throne high and lifted up. And O Lord, we exalt you. We magnify your glorious holy name because we need you, O God. Cause all of us to be honest in heart. Cause all of us to think seriously about what's happening. The end of the world's coming. Evil's happening on every hand. But Lord, yet the people of God are going to have the power of God moving. Lord, send a great move of the Spirit before that terrible day comes and bring the children back to their fathers and the fathers back to the children before that great and terrible day of the Lord come. I mean, when children obey their parents and love them and parents can talk to their children in love and gentleness. What a wonderful thing. We must eradicate all tradition and doctrines of men. Get rid of that stuff altogether. Well, I'll tell you, I know I want to do it God's way, but I, you know I do still think we ought to hold on to this. I think we ought to do this, we ought to do that. I tell you what, there's some things we need to hold on to. 
There's some things we need to let go. And the Lord will show us what to do. If we're honest, he'll show us. If we're not honest, he will not show us. Now, there's one thing he, he told me straight out. I will not deal with a dishonest heart. I don't care how they pray, how they worship me, whatever they say, I will not yield to a carnal mind or to a dishonest heart. I'm not going to do it. I'm holy. They don't even know they're wrong because they're so carnally minded. All they think about is they want things done their way. Listen, folks. If you don't think your leadership's doing it right, get on your knees. I dare you to be on your knees for a while. I'm not talking about two hours. I'm talking about get on your knees. There's a fellow I know. He was an alcohol and tobacco and just about everything. And um, his wife tried to get him saved. His wife kept trying to get him out of this thing. He got stuck with his stuff. Yeah, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Not interested. The church people prayed for him. The church people tried to get him persuaded to change. Now, I know this man. It's not a story. I know the man. Church people tried to get him changed. You need to get saved. And one day, with their prayers, all of a sudden, he changed right now. That man had hair cleared down, I mean, way down in his back, and he's a woolly-looking guy, and a rock singer, and all kind of things. And, I mean, they said there was no hope for him. But what are you praying for then? You know, what are you praying then? You know what? That man told his wife one day, he said, I got to get right with God. I got to find the Lord. I'm not going to let you talk to me until I find the Lord. He goes back. He said, I went out to the garage. The only place I knew to go, went to the garage. I stayed out there with the Bible going all the time. I had the Bible on sermons preaching to me. Bible and sermons, Bible and sermons. And I listened to sermons and listened to preaching. And I listened to sermons and listened to preaching. And he said, I mean, the next day, Back out there again, no food, no nothing. Go back out there again the next day, long hair and all. Got out there and started praying. And all of a sudden, he broke through the third day. I believe he said he broke through. He come in. Went to barber, cut his hair and got some new clothes and changed his garments and uh, cleaned up. And, and he said... Uh, I went back to church, and he said, right away, I started testifying what out to me. And people got excited. They got mad. He said, you know, when I was a sinner, I was a friend of everybody. When I got saved, and he moved me. He had to leave the church, mind you. I know that to be a fact. He had to leave the church because he wasn't accepting. He said, getting fanatical now. I tell you, you do get fanatical when you get saved one time, right? You get pretty odd sometimes. That man's still living today anyway. And it's a wonderful thing. We in some of ourselves submit to God in authority. We need to learn to submit to authority. You know, I tell you what, if I need to make a decision that's pretty difficult, and I don't know exactly what to do, I go to leadership and find out what their opinion is, what their thought is, how they feel about the situation. Folks, that's a way of safety. That's safety. That's when the multitude of counselors are safety. That's the only place that's safe when you're honest hearts. We must arrive uh, at the conclusion that we are... Uh, uh, in the hands of the Almighty God, and will answer for how we handle our uh, our uh, miracles and signs and wonders if they happen to us. How are we going to handle it? What would happen if you went out and laid hands on somebody, and I mean, all of a sudden, a cripple started walking and so forth? 
What happened to you? You know, we was just going through the thing just the other day. You know, right over here at the Mount Covert Groton Club building is where lots of miracles happened. I mean, stroke shield, people didn't have operations and all kind of things. At Mount Covert Groton Club building. Right over at the Cornerstone Church, right up the road just a little bit, miracles happened all over the place. You know, there was nobody arguing with me, nobody fussed, nobody out of unity. Everybody was in unity with me. Everybody was. And look what started happening. Everybody's in unity. Nobody criticizing, nobody finding fault. And, all right, let's see. Uh, up to Broadway, same thing happened. Every person in that church up Broadway got healed. Every one of them did. Went to uh, over there at uh, Stanley, Virginia, two churches over there. People healed all over the place. Went to Harrison over this way. Every person was healed, including the AIDS patients. People came the whole way from New Jersey down that meeting. And things really was happening until contention started. But everything started falling apart. I went all over the place, and that's kind of here, back and forth all over, lots and lots of things happened. There's other places around here, things was happening right and left. And I mean, it was... Uh, Grace coming to church over there. I mean, lots of miracles out in the Grace coming to church, right over there at Grace coming to church, where my wife's funeral was. As we was there at the funeral, we was out there at eating in that building. I said, this is where the miracles happened. You know, now you say, where are they at today? Too many people's got their opinion. And the Lord instructed me, you get back in unity, I'll move. If you don't, I won't. We're going to get back in unity now, folks. Right. We must pray together in unison. We must get in this thing, agreement. Total agreement. All right. What you need me to do, Lord? What do you need me to do? Yes, but Lord, I don't want to do it. i tell you what I want to do. I want to go out there and be seen. Suppose he signs you a job like this. You go up back all alone and pray for 10 days every night for these people. For 10 days. What would you say? Let somebody else do the work. Let other people get the miracles and signs. What would you say then? That'll tell you where you're at. That'll explain a whole lot where you're at. Your opinion, my opinion, their opinion doesn't count. It's what does the Bible have to say. Not your opinion on the Bible or what it says. Not your interpretation. Well, only with an honest heart are we going to get back where we need to get. An honest heart. We've got to have an honest heart before we get back. You know, Simon was... Simon the sorcerer, we call him, was uh, watching the apostles lay hands on the people and they received the Holy Ghost. And so, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But, Peter said to them, Thy money perish with thee, because thou thoughtest the gift of God may be purchased with money. I tell you, folks, I see a lot of people. I want to be seen. I want to be heard. Oh, no, I don't know. No, no, Lord, I'll do what you ask me to do. But wait. Just wait a little. It'll come out in the wash out the while. You'll soon find out. And I'll tell you, folks, we need to be very careful. You know, Miriam 
and Aaron, uh, they spoke against Moses' uh, wife, which she was Ethiopian, and they criticized and condemned, and they thought they had real reason for it. But now the reason that he married that Ethiopian, he never thought he'd get back with the people of God ever again, so he married this Ethiopian. Well, anyway, this Ethiopian woman, and then here's what uh, uh, Miriam and Aaron had to say. Hath God the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? Wait well, a little, something happened there. And the Lord heard it. And the Lord heard it. The Lord heard it. Be careful what you said, Vince leadership. The Lord may hear you. Now the man Moses was very meek. Of all, all the men upon the earth, I mean, you talk about a reputation now. Nobody was as meek as Moses. In the whole earth, there was nobody that meek. And yet people criticized him. Isn't that something? People criticized him, the meekest man on earth. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. Is faithful in all his house. Now watch this. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. And when that man speaks up, you better know he heard from heaven. Because this man, because he's meekness, I can give it to him. This man spoke up, you better listen to what he tells you. Wherefore, then were you not afraid to speak evil of thy servant Moses? Why weren't you afraid? Why aren't you trembling because of this? Folks, listen. If the Lord did what he said he's going to, he could do, it's not going to be very good. He's calling me to call people to repentance. That's what he's doing. He's calling me to call people to repentance. I don't want bad things happening here. The days of Ananias Sapphira is not over. The days of Simon the Sorcerer is not over. You know what? But David, now watch the unity. When David was going to be put in for king, and these men of war, these men of war that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make King David king over all Israel and the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. All of them was in 100% agreement, David shall be king. God chose David to be king and we testify amen to that. Folks, listen, that's good stuff. Uh, to me, that's good. That's what the Lord is showing. Let's get together here. Let's get back to unity. Because unless you are an ordained president, you better be careful what you're saying. And even then, you better be careful because we need to be careful what we're saying about each other. This is where two persons literally become one. When they, two people agree, and I'll tell you what, that's a wonderful thing. And, and over here in, uh, in John, I don't think it got there. I want to go to John chapter 17. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to John chapter 17, if I can get there. John chapter 17. That Bible's big, but at least I can read it. All right, now. I want to go over at verse 20, 17, 20. Uh, and Jesus is doing the praying. Now we call this the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Neither pray I for these alone, 
but to them which shall come to believe on me through their word, that I that they all may be one, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also it might be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I've given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and I have loved them as thou hast loved me. Now you think of that, that they may be one with us. You're a part of this great, majestic thing. He said, here's my spirit. I want to give it to you. Here's my spirit. Take my spirit. You can have it. You can, you, I'll have it in you. The same spirit Jesus had is in us. Greater is he in you, in you than he is in the world. Second Corinthians 3.13. Notice the final words. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be good comfort. Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Philippians 1, 27, Let your conversation be as become as the gospel of Christ, that whether I come to see you or else be absent, I may hear of your prayer that you stand fast in one faith, one spirit, and one mind striving, striving together. Striving together. For the faith of the gospel is striving. Everybody's striving. Finally, 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, be ye all one mind, having compassion one to another. Love us, brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Dear Father, we thank you tonight for the awesome Word of God. We thank you for everything you've done for us in the past and Lord, I'm really trying my best to help us to get together that the mighty power of God can come. Lord, forgive us of where we failed, where we, anyone in the church, anyone that may have failed, anyone that may have said something they shouldn't have said, anyone that may have got offended shouldn't have been offended, Lord, give them another chance. Lord, out of your mercy and grace, have mercy upon him, Lord. We need your help tonight. Dear God, we give you thanks. And would somebody bring me that bottle of oil up here? Would you just bring that bottle of oil and hand it to me here?